Paul, I mean, we're a little bit closer than you perhaps thought it would be 10 15 minutes ago. How do you sum up how that one went? Uh, yeah, the game in general, I thought Huddersfield started really strong. I thought they were really dominant with the rook, but with the ball and without. Uh, but I thought we scored two fantastic tries. One through brilliant defence with the intercept and one through fantastic skill on a transition there. So 12-0 uh, up. Uh, we then started to get ascendancy with rook control on last players through Mark Sneed and looked really comfortable. Um, I thought we then had a try disallowed, which was an incorrect decision. Um, you're all nodding, so write that in your report that you all agree. Um, uh, yeah, and obviously we, and then when we start pulling away, I, f I felt uh, that the game had a, we could have gone on and had a healthy scoreline, but you know, credit to Huddersfield, I, I, I thought, you know, the, there were two Simbins and a red card, so it got a little bit chaotic, the game. The chaos kind of suited a team that's chasing the game. And uh, and then you know they made a real fist of it at the end. They're a quality side. They've got quality players. So um, I'd have been gutted for the players if we'd we had to come away with the win because I felt we were the better team and deserved the win. Um, but uh, you know before the game, then to to be asked the question of whether you know whatever it looked like, I'd have, I'd have been very happy with the um, two points against the side that's not only. A quality side, but a confident side because of the way they've been playing and the you know the results that they've been notching up against good opposition. So uh, overall, we're very happy. We spoke in commentary about the first ten minutes of the second half, perhaps being the most important of the game. If you're a man like to come up with the players you did to force mm. a goal and drop out in the manner you did, and then to get the try, is that just somewhat what your team's about? Um, well, yeah, I think. Uh, we, we definitely got a lot of spirit. We've said that before, so we we, we look comfortable in in that uh, time. And, and you know, when you when you get a, a good end to the set and re, and force a drop out, then that that ten minutes that we were down a player starts. You know, you start chipping into that, and and, it, and when you're in control of the ball, when you've got the ball in your hands, that ten minutes doesn't seem uh, awfully uh, long, does it? It's, it's a lot harder when you're defending. So um, yeah, I thought uh, I, I thought. Yeah, you're right. That ten minutes, uh, we needed to be tough, and I thought that we we came through it unscathed. I don't think we were too uh, zapped of energy from it either. I thought we would come through okay. It's the first time I've spoken to you since Mark Sneed signed a new contract as well. I mean, he showed tonight just why you've tied him down. Is he playing the best rugby league of his career? Do you think? I mean, he's won Landstad trophies and and God knows what. So. Um, I wouldn't like to say that he's playing different probably than he's played before. He's playing the different game, so he's evolved as a player, as a, as a mature player. He's evolved, and and the, you know, like everybody in the game, you got to move and evolve and change and adapt to the the way that the game gets uh, played and changes over generations. And he's done about what 14 seasons now, so he's he's you know he's he's certainly not stale, and he's he's uh, he's doing things that he wouldn't have been doing. Uh, ten years ago, so uh, it's great um, acquisition or great uh, retention for the club. And you know, he's, he's well, he controlled the game, didn't he? Certainly, after that initial 25 minutes from Huddersfield, I felt he controlled the game. Um, and so, he's got some decent soldiers around him in, in Nenny and Tim and Callum and big athletes, Dion, now at Sabax, Ethan. They were all really good for him, and and and, uh, and you know, everybody in the team kind of. Played their own part and their own role, and uh, and they're all happy doing whatever their role is. They're all happy to do that, um, and they're a selfless group. And uh, you know, and, and I thought we, like I said, I thought we deserved the win, and and uh, I'm glad for them. I'm pleased for them that you know they got the two points in the end. The final one from me: wins against Warrington last week, Huddersfield this week. Two teams whose expectations are probably to be in the top four, maybe top six. I mean, I think you. Joint top, yeah, in fifth, it's that close at the top. Do you think that you've made two real statements in the last weeks or so? Yeah, well, we've made a few, I think. We're a bit okay, we beat Saints away, so, uh, but we, uh, we're still only, what, just gone past the third of the season, so it, it can all go great, it can all go bad at any, any point. Um, for us, to have them in under our belt is, is fantastic, and, uh, you know, so we're. We just we have a lot of belief and, and and it really is every week as it comes. So we're you know we're we're, we're a very humble group and and that's I know we we talk ourselves down quite a bit because it suits the narrative, but I think it also keeps our feet on the ground and the minute we get ahead of ourselves, um, pride comes before a fall. So we 
uh, we're humble and respectful and, and we've, we knew coming here today that we're playing against a really good side um, that uh, you know made things extremely tough and you, if you come here and win you've got to earn it and, and I, felt, I felt our boys bent the backs and earned it uh, and it, it, they didn't do it by uh, trick players or, or anything magical they did it by uh, uh, on a basis of really solid resilient defence and then uh, bravery and endeavour with the ball as well so I thought we were really good just on um, McDonald, um, Paul. I mean, I think everybody thought it could be a great sign for you, but I mean, he proved terrific, hasn't he? Every carry he seems threatened. How, how good has it been? Oh, uh, brilliant! Yeah, he's fantastic. He's he's uh, he's strength of carry. I think he'll get better as well. I think I think there's more to come from Lenny. I think um, there's certain things that he, you know he, he's he knows he can improve on, and he's willing to work hard to improve on. Um, and I think in, in, what you see is a result of a lot of hard work in the week. He's, he's not just a guy, you know, he's, he's a bit of a character, so he's, he's not just a guy with a smiley face who comes out and, and is a natural um, player who just performs on match day. He works hard, extremely hard in the week, and he's very diligent with how he prepares for a game. Um, so he's, uh, you know, there's not many surprises when you come here. We've, we've, we've kind of seen what's going to be coming at us and what we're going at. So. Uh, there's a lot of homework was in in the week from the whole group, and uh, I, I think our group uh, prides itself on doing that. And and you know we make sure that um, we give ourselves the best chance every week, and and, and it's pleasing for us as coaches to see um, it come to fruition and they get the rewards for that 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 diligence and that homework that they do. Is that picking off Connor passes sort of things? Obviously from around here. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you know. It, you know it's that that's preview that you get you get uh, fortune favors the brave you get your rewards you know so, but by, by working hard and doing your own work it, this game's too hard to just turn up and and play and um, so yeah absolutely just a couple of minutes from the end uh, Jake Sharp's help from the field what what's the story with him does it look like a serious injury yeah yeah i think uh, there's a bit of a knee injury going on there so we've got a couple there, i think um i think um Joe Mellor broke his hand as well, so he'd be gone now. I think that's a bad one. So, so that's the always the danger with us, isn't it? That's the uh, that's the cliff edge. So. You, you mentioned the obstruction. There were a couple of other debatable calls. What were your thoughts on that red card? Uh, there were a lot in it. Let's be honest. There were a lot in it. Well, we weren't on the end of our seat showing red card, um, but there was also a yellow card before that that we thought was a harsh decision as well. Um, so, yeah. When it, some you, lose. you do, yeah. And, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because I thought the game overall was played in good spirits. Um, and so sometimes you sit here and think, are they governed by and restricted by who's in the rear, what's going on outside? And because the game was played in good spirits and I don't think anybody have had any complaints. Had first and foremost Ryan Brealey not been Simbin or Wallace been red carded. I don't think there'd have been anyone sat here saying this should have been yellow and red cards. But um, it's not my concern now. So you know we're here with two points, and that's all that matters for us.